um, even today. But um, what I want to show you today is uh, an update on heap track. I actually had a lightning talk about that topic last year as well. And um, a lot of things happened in that um, case, uh, in, in that period. Um, heap track is a heap profiler. So who of you has used Massive or even heap track before for optimizing uh, Qt applications? Just a few. Um, please try it out. It's actually quite awesome. Um, this tool here is Massive Visualizer, my old um, visualizer to look at Massive data. And when I worked on that, I always wondered, like, Valgrind is so slow to analyze and track heap memory, right? So there should be a way to make that same thing, but just faster. And um, not only do I want to have a faster Massive, I also want to get more data. I want to find temporary allocations. I want to find where you are allocating um, lots and lots of data, but then throw it away again, killing your performance. If you look at the performance of nearly every Qt application, uh, I bet you that in the top five hotspots, you'll find malloc. And those are due to you using the Qt API in some way which is not optimal, leading to tempor temporary allocations. And this tool will find that. Uh, you use it just like any other profiling tool. You can either prepend it to your actual um, invocation of your application, or what it also supports, contrary to Massive, you can attach to a running process and then collect the data you want to look at, right? And then in the end, you use the heap track UI um, tool that I'm in the process of writing to actually look at the data it collected, and it's a lot. So I said already it keeps track of how often you trigger allocations, which is pretty cool to find temporary allocations. Um, when there are super high numbers in there that you did not expect, take a look at the code. Maybe you can find something easy to uh, fix there, like taking out the Q string allocation by wrapping it in a Q Latin one string or Q string literal or hoisting stuff out of loops and things like that, right? Um, the UI also allows top-down views, which Massive never had, uh, so maybe that's interesting for you. Um, but more importantly, the same graphs are there as well. Um, I'm working on adding all the other features you know from the Massive Visualizer, but in principle, it's there already. And even better, you can not only uh, trigger or track what, the, um, what memory you consume and leak at a given point in time, but also you get uh, how many allocations have been triggered over time. And the accuracy is much higher. And these time slots here are in a one millisecond uh, duration, and all the data is there. I don't throw anything away which Massive is doing, right? The data files you have there, they contain each and every allocation and deallocation. All the information is there. And we can do, I think, even more than what I have here right now. Uh, I'm quite fond of the flame graph visualization to look at uh, lots and lots of data that is associated with call stacks. And um, I added that for this uh, tool, which is super helpful to look at where your hotspots are. The wider any given function is, the more allocations are triggered in this case. You, I'll add that for the other data types as well in the future. But already here you can see in the case of um, starting up the KDE text editor, uh, and if you have spell checking enabled, what actually triggers a bunch, I mean thousands of allocations, is the spelling framework. It's a C library, a C++ library actually called Hunspell. It triggers thousands of allocations. So something maybe I will look at in the future to optimize. Uh, the data that is there also allows you to look at the distribution of the sizes you request and how often you do that. When you do that in, in a given Qt application, what you'll end up with is something like this. And if you look at the lower part here, so this is double logarithmic, here's the requested size, and here's how often it was uh, requested, uh, you'll see a problem of Qt up to today. Um, Qstring has no small string optimization, something that hopefully will be fixed with uh, Qt 6. But right now, even strings that only pass in one character will trigger memory allocation. And the same goes for two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. Stud string has a small string optimization. Think roughly 20 characters, even more, can be stored in there without triggering an allocation. And this is an easy thing to fix, hopefully, in the future for Qt, um, to get rid of these kind of allocations. Uh, the, the overhead you pay for calling malloc is simply not worth it 
when you're storing a single character in a string. Um, how did I do this? Actually, I stand on the shoulders of giants. I just found out finally by uh, actually looking at tools like API Trace or Fogel and how they collect data and how they collect backtraces. And I found uh, libunwind to, it's very fast, but you then need the information to also track uh, process um, in instruction pointers to the information where in the file it is, so the line numbers and whatever that actually trigger the allocation. Libbacktrace is that solution I was missing for years, and that actually enabled the whole thing to work. And you can install it. It's all free and open source on the KDE servers. It's compiled like any other CMake application. If you have problems, contact me. And um, it's super usable already. I know um, my colleagues use it uh, with great success. I've stopped using Massive, essentially. And um, that code set already gives us the foundation for lots of more tools, like tracking uh, lock contention or things like that as well in the future, or I.O. tracing, right? It's doable. Um, the UI is not yet finished, but I thankfully have some time uh, sponsored by my employer, KDAP, to improve that part. So this is coming along in the next days or weeks. And I really think more people should start using it. Um, sorry. Uh, the ugly part is that it's Linux-specific because of the way I uh, use Linux-specific API. Uh, it's not Linux-specific in principle. Actually, if you look on GitHub, there's a Vin heap track. It's a port of Heaply uh, that spits out the format I use as well, so you can load that part in my UI and have the same data. So in principle, it also works on, on Windows already. And if you want to optimize stack memory, that's not the right tool. Use Massive for that. So yeah, that's the end. Thanks. So thanks to Milian and uh